Hey guys, welcome to a cool deck tech that we're doing today. We are interviewing Matt G, uh, who took down both of the regionals so far in the MRC season with pretty much the same deck, a little bit of adjustments. So um, congratulations to you, Matt. And uh, we're gonna have him just jump in and start with the material deck here and uh, explain to you guys what all the cards are and maybe some of the reasons that he uh, picked them and everything. So go ahead, take it away, Matt. All right, so it is a Wind Allies deck. It's a little bit of a combo deck too. So we are using the Spirit of Wind. And we are leveling into Lorraine. Uh, Lorraine level one is the only other, uh, the only champion in the deck that we level into. And with Lorraine, we do have two swords. We have uh, Sword of Seeking and Ornamental Greatsword. Uh, usually you will be using the Ornamental Greatsword more than the Sword of Seeking, but uh, in stuff like ally matchups or when you aren't even uh, leveling up to go for a kill, uh, you can just bring out the Sword of Seeking just to help uh, clear some, uh, some of the board. And the reason that Ornamental is so great in this deck is because we are running four copies of Second Wind and four copies of Rallied Advance. And with the uh, Power Cells, uh, you can make a really high attack ally and swing multiple times with it. Next up, we have Backup Charger. This is going to be your first materialization a lot of the times. Uh, just being able to get a power cell that's rested and uh, draw a card to uh, keep playing allies and holding up interaction is really, really valuable. For our Divine Relic, we have uh, GCR. It's uh, it's an allies deck, so just being able to replenish your hand size as you're playing allies is really valuable. And the only bobble that we have in the main board is Wind Bobble. Uh, this is the only match that really goes long enough for it. Uh, you can say there's some arguments that a water uh, a water matchup might go longer, but it is in the sideboard uh, because water matchups generally feel pretty favored. All right, next up we have Terrafring and Safeguard Amulet. These are just really good generic uh, defensive regalia. Terrafring can be really powerful in the allies matchup. Uh, if you have a turn that you're setting up where you can clear a few allies as you're developing the board uh, and you're able to materialize a Terrafring in the same turn, you can really take over the board uh, because it'll set up some uh, really tough positions for the opponent to take favorable trades. And Safeguard, you usually just bring this out against stuff like Rai, uh, but the extra health buffer as you're still pressuring them can be really nice. All right, next up we have Poison Coating Oil. Giving a unit with stealth plus two attack is really strong in this deck, especially if you can also give it a power cell buff like a, on a Shimmer Cloak. Uh, it's just a little bit of extra reach. It also lets you, you know, go in one turn with a Rallied and Power Cell uh, turn. And even if they're alive at just a few HP, uh, having this as a follow-up to bring out the next turn with a, a stealth unit from your hand could be really, really strong. And then Last but not least, we have Eye of Argus and Smoke Bombs. These are float converters. You do play six floating in this deck, so and you sideboard some extra. So just having an option to convert that and be able to draw a card off of it is really strong. And they do have some pretty good uh, uses in the meta right now, just being able to give a unit true sight and hit through stealth, or give a taunt or intercept stealth for a turn to swing through it, it can be really strong. Awesome, I love the fact that you're on Wind Bobble, just that, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think we're coming into a new meta where that kind of call is, uh, you know, a little bit more necessary with Norm Spirit actually finally running around and everything. Ally decks don't really have the luxury of just throwing three bobbles into a deck and calling it good. You know, you have to be a little bit more uh, particular with uh, how you want to approach that. So really cool to see that decision being played here. Um, and then just one question before we move on to the main deck. Is there a card that you feel is kind of on the chopping block? You might uh, be the first one to replace or does material deck feel like really solid? There's no changes that you can make. I will say, I don't know if it's just the matchups that I faced, but I haven't really gone to the safeguard amulet as much. So that would, might be the one that you could cut or at least move it to the sideboard. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and move on to the main board. All right, starting off, we have four copies of Second Wind and four copies of Rallied Advance. These are the most efficient ways to restand your allies. And these are your kill cards in this deck because with power cells, 
and with Ornamental Greatsword, you're able to make a creature that's sometimes uh, seven attack or more and swing multiple times with it in the same turn. And we also have four Manufacture Cell. This is the most efficient way to get a Power Cell uh, on Spirit. So being able to hold up other interaction and also hold up a Manufacture Cell is really great because if they don't force you to use any interaction, you can cycle a card and make a power cell at the end of their turn. And then you will go to your turn, you'll have the power cell ready to go, and uh, you can level up and look for a kill. All right, so let's get into some of the combat tricks. We do have uh, three favorable wins. Uh, just being able to save an ally is really, really strong. And you do want to level up for, there's quite a bit of class bonus in this deck, so. Just being able to save an ally and then level up safely is uh, really nice in this deck. It's also three reclaim, uh, same thing as favorable wins, but if the ally is going to die and favorable wins isn't going to save it, uh, you can always reclaim. You do recover the influence because you get the card back and uh, have a float to level up with. I am also on two Zephyr. Uh, this can be a really strong tool to either save an ally or use it on one of your opponent's regalia. Uh, right now, the biggest target uh, that you want to hit with this is Sylvie. We'll use uh, Quicksilver Grail with Covenant of Thorns and try to stop your kill turn. So as long as you have a Zephyr, uh, you can use all your power cells, uh, swing in with Second Wind or Rallied, and then when they go to crack the Quicksilver Grail, you just Zephyr it and you win. Zephyr can also be used to save one of your allies, which can be really good if they commit to try to clear your board. Uh, just keeping an ally alive and then if it's on Automaton, you can buff it up the next turn. It can be really strong. And then for our last combat trick, we have Stifling Trap. There are a lot of great targets for this in the meta right now. Uh, being able to deny a Dungeon Guide level up or something like a Storm Slime from hitting you for a bunch of damage can be really strong. Uh, you can also use it in the mirror on stuff like Andronica or just to deal two damage in an ally matchup can be really useful. It can clear fairies. It's just a really versatile card. And that's why I'm running four. And then for our last spell, we have four fairy whispers. Uh, this is a great consistency card. It lets you dig for pretty much any of these tricks, except for a manufacturer cell. But even then you can, you know, glimpse it to the second, uh, second one on the top and still draw it for next turn. Uh, just being able to find the tools you need, find your kill cards like Second Wind and Rallied, uh, or just find the allies that you know you really need in that matchup is a really strong, uh, really strong tool. It's super cool to see uh, Wind Allies kind of coming back to how like its roots started in way, way back in DOA meta before FTC, because I feel like Wind Allies for a very long time has been like all about Swarm. You had to have the highest ally count that you could possibly get. And now we're seeing right. more of that, like, here's those wind tricks that we used to have and all that kind of stuff. So really cool to see uh, wind allies, like, kind of going all the way back to its roots there. But uh, yeah, we can go ahead and move on to those famous allies. All right, so this is an automaton deck, but we do run eight humans. We run four lurking and four wind rider. These are still just uh, some of the best two threes in the game. Uh, Wind Rider just being a wind card and also getting bigger once you level up uh, is really nice. And Lurking Assailant, setting up for a backup charger, even going second, you'll play a Lurking Assailant. You can hold it up so they can't clear it. It has stealth and then you'll go into your backup charger and uh, you can start fighting for board that way. Starting off with our automatons, we have four charged mannequin. It is a two cost one three, but once you control a power cell, it gets one attack. So. As soon as you get your backup charger or your manufacturer cell online, it is a two cost two three, which is very efficient stats. All right, next up we have four Eternal Magistrate. It is a two cost one three, so it's efficient stats. And it also has an effect that will slow down your opponent. It can stop things like Dungeon Guide and a lot of other things in the meta right now. So just being able to slow the game down is really, really valuable. All right, next up, we have one of your strongest turn one plays, uh, four Shimmer Cloak Assassin. A three cost two two stealth is really great stats. It's really annoying to clear and it can set you up to gain uh, a lot of board control. It's also one of your best targets for Rally Advance and Second Win because it'll stick around the most. And it's got that two attack, which is more than Charge Mannequin once you use your Power Cells or Eternal Magistrate. 
you do have to watch out for a reprogram because it does just die to that. But other than that, it is one of your best allies. And then we have another three cost 2-2 two, two, Armored Valkyrie. It is an automaton with Steadfast. So this can be really annoying for a lot of decks in the meta right now to try to deal with. Stuff like Sylvie without a, a Force Cake and a buff counter has to run in their slimes and usually trade with it. And decks like Tristan that don't really run that high uh, static creatures will have to trade one for one with it. Let's get into the next card here. It's really great with Andronica. So Andronica is a three cost one one, but if you imbue it, it becomes a two two with vigor. And on enter, it will put a buff counter on two automaton allies you control. So this is one of your big hitters in the deck. And it is one of the main reasons why you would want to level up early just to use her effect. Uh, it's a good thing to note that her on enter does not target those creatures. So when you play her, your opponent will have to respond before you declare where you're putting those buffs. So you can play her with two other automatons on the board and they have to choose what they want to do before you decide where they go. And last but definitely not least, we have Rose. And Rose is a four cost two three, so it's a little, uh, a little more expensive than the other ones, but it does have Intercept and True Sight, which are two great keywords. And the class bonus is what you'll also be using her for, is the fast activation. So once you're level one, you can pass, almost pass your whole turn holding up interaction once you already have a few allies on the board and kind of see what your opponent does. And with all your tricks and stuff, uh, you'll be safe to just hold up interaction. And then if they don't force out any of it, you can just play her uh, usually in their end step or in your recollection phase and just get a fast ally, which is really, really strong. You can also use her, uh, her effect in response to an attack card uh, declaration. So if your opponent plays something like a Rending Flames or a Slice and Dice, you can play her in response to that. And she still will be able to intercept that attack before they de uh, declare the target. I've been a, a big Rose hater myself <laughs> in uh, in previous formats, honestly, but I think it, it's finally starting to find a home in a deck like this. And it's really cool, kind of like how I was talking about earlier when uh, we covered all the spells, that Wind Allies is, is feeling a little bit more interactive than just, uh, you know, I've got 50 allies in my deck and I'm going to play some every single turn. Now you've Definitely. got your, your Magistrate is actually like making your opponent play differently and Rose is your interaction that you can kind of even bluff if you need to, you know, hold up a bunch of cards and all that stuff too. So it's really, really awesome to see the evolution of Wind Allies. So I think that's everything in the main deck, right? So we could yep. go ahead and move on to that sideboard now. All right, starting off, we have the Water Resonance Bobble. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you're playing against the Water deck, you bring it in over the Wind Bobble. It's just nice to have a little, a nice, another way to uh, replenish your hand size. In the sideboard, I also have four Train Hawk, uh, True Sight, and Vigor, and a, it's a three cost two two. So it can be really useful to clear uh, Stealth allies if your opponent's playing a lot of Stealth, or if you know your opponent has something like a Cleave. Uh, just being able to flood the, the board early with Vigor or Steadfast units can make it really punishing for them to try to clear your board. Next up, we have two additional copies of Zephyr. This is mostly for Sylvie. Just being able to have a Zephyr when you need it. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you can use it on the Covenant of Thorns uh, when you're going for a kill. But you can also stop something like a BCO Frenzy, which can be pretty game-winning if they're able to get that out. So you just want to watch out for that. And always being able to hold this up is really nice in that matchup. And then lastly, we have three Reprogram and three Vertigo Secree. Reprogram is just a little bit of a hedge for the mirror because uh, I was kind of expecting at least a few other Wind Allies decks, and I did play against, I think, two, uh, two mirrors uh, in Michigan. So having that in the sideboard was really nice. And then the Vertigo Secree is used for the Tristan matchup. Uh, a lot of the times they'll try to stabilize by leveling to three and then using some of their preparation counters to redirect attacks to their ominous shadows. And Vertigo's Decree, you can use two of the modes, the first mode and the third mode here, and you can clear both of those ominous shadow tokens. So you can even hold up four cards and play this in the pre-recollect and just remove their shadows and start swinging in for a kill. 
Well, Matt, thank you so much for coming onto the channel and uh, sharing all the tips and tricks of the unstoppable Wind Allies deck that is just <laughs> taking down these MRC regionals. And to all of our viewers, thank you so much for coming out and uh, you know seeing seeing someone new on the channel talk about uh, their deck. You know, we wanted to give respect to Matt for uh, creating the deck and piloting it with efficiency to back-to-back -back wins. So thank you all for watching and have a good day.